Hello and uh, thanks for tuning in. Horizontal wells make up the vast majority of oil and gas development in the Western Canadian sedimentary basin and the proportion of horizontal versus vertical production wells increased steadily since about 2004. Uh, with this shift in drilling patterns, uh, new approaches arise, such as active uh, reservoir navigation, and new challenges with that. Many times we encountered uh, discrepancies between, on the one hand, the model geology, and on the other hand, the reservoir geometry interpreted while drilling. We found that the uh, inaccuracies in directional survey play a large part in this. Uh, Identifying sources of errors and the uh, means of correction and compensation becomes crucial in developing uh, reservoirs with horizontal wells. We will look at the sources of uh, uncertainty and error in uh, directional surveys. We will look for uh, procedures to correct errors and uh, reduce uncertainty. Uh, we will have a quick look at the software-based geosteering approach and how to deal with imperfect uh, surveys. Uh, then we'll uh, walk the two-way road between uh, geomodel and geosteering interpretation and examine the uh, advantages of active reservoir navigation when compared to drilling on Prague. There are quite a few potential sources of uh, inaccuracies, from uh, operator errors to inherent uh, uncertainty. Approximations are always used in uh, service uh, calculations. The minimum uh, curvature method assumes minimum dogleg values between surveys points. Longer survey intervals lead to even more assumptions regarding the well trajectory between uh, points. Operator errors come in many flavors and sizes. Uh, we will uh, pinpoint some of them shortly. A magnetic reference is always applies sometimes better, sometimes worse, and uh, plays a big role in azimuth corrections. When it comes to corrections, uh, magnetic ones are always applied, or should be at least, uh, but many times uh, grid corrections are left to the operator, and uh, that has a significant bearing on uh, land considerations, such as uh, hard boundaries. In the cross-section uh, depicted here, we see a well drilled uh, right by an existing vertical well. The reservoir appears to be six meters deeper than in the vertical well. The same difference was confirmed in a leg uh, drilled on the other side of the vertical well. Uh, this six meter difference was puzzling to say the least, uh, given, given that uh, four meter uh, reservoir thickness. So what causes these uh, discrepancies? How many times did we hear exchanges between MWD operator and directional driller, where the MWD hand takes a reading, the DD says, this does not, does not look good, let's shoot another one. Then on the next reading we hear, that's more like it, validated. Now experience plays a big role, but some bias is always present. As geologists, we take that, that one validated survey and we base all our uh, subsequent decisions on that. Sag errors uh, introduced when a survey tool is placed in a drill pipe that sags in the well bore are worse, uh, as they tend to compound error in one direction preferentially. We'll look at that in more uh, detail later. We will look at the uh, different types of uh, magnetic variation that have to be accounted for when reading directional surveys. Magnetic interference of uh, drill strings and uh, adjacent well bore casing can also be significant. We will not talk about uh, pipe stretch today. Uh, that is a totally different subject. Just keep in mind that uh, errors in uh, measured depth assumptions are also reflected in uh, directional surveys. We will not look uh, at errors in assembling tools or uh, placing tools in the uh, drill strings. I will just mention that uh, misalignment also leads to errors that are compounded in one direction or another, uh, creating survey drift that gets worse as we uh, get the well deeper. Uh, the geosteering uh, cross-section depicted here shows a well that was planned parallel to geomodel structure, uh, which was expected to trend upwards. The geosteering correlation is quite clear, showing that uh, the beds are dipping down rather than up. This divergence is most probably due to compounded survey error, uh, where inclination reads consistently higher. 
there are some uh, challenges in taking surveys that will always be there. Uh, good practices will minimize errors uh, stemming from uh, inherent uh, uncertainty, but they will still be there. Uh, magnetic uh, referencing largely compensates for uh, magnetic position if location and time are set uh, properly uh, and the detailed uh, magnetic model uh, is used. A Stockhausen effect uh, related to survey uh, station position relative to slide patterns, it, it's well documented and can be mitigated with increased survey density and the continuous uh, inclination corrections. We will look at some uh, particular sources of errors in the next few slides. Let's have a closer look at the uh, SAG error. Uh, depending where the survey sensors are located in the drill string, the containing drill string will point slightly up or slightly down at the, uh, as the string uh, hangs between stabilizers and bit, for example, uh, in colors of a lower diameter that sink or sag to the bottom of the horizontal hole. A, sensors, uh, a sensor positioned in front of a stabilizer will uh, read generally lower inclination. One that is placed behind the stabilizer will read higher. Uh, these errors are compounded, uh, getting more serious as the hole is uh, deepened. The addition or subtraction of 0.2 degrees inclination at every survey station can lead to a very skewed uh, well uh, positioning image. A good directional uh, drilling provider will include SAC correction in their survey validation, but not all do. Um, there's another problem when uh, changes in the BHA uh, occur and that results in a different placement of sensor uh, when these changes are not reflected in the calculations. There are a few sources uh, of uh, variation in Earth's uh, magnetic field. Some are location dependent, some changes occur over time, some over centuries, some over hours. Uh, compensation for uh, local magnetic uh, declination and dip, uh, in-field referencing, those are always applied. Uh, there are outfits such as IP Magnetic or uh, MacVar that provide the real-time correction for uh, uh, diurnal and the dynamic variations, uh, what's called the interpolated in-field referencing. That's at an additional charge, so it leaves it up to the operator if these uh, corrections are applied or not. In addition to uh, magnetic corrections from uh, magnetic north to true north, Another correction needs to be applied to um, convert from true north to grid north. Uh, these corrections account uh, for the orthographic projections of land system grids, uh, most common UTM projections. And uh, depending on the uh, surface location relative to the reference meridian, a positive or negative correction factor needs to be applied to obtain true grid projection. Many times uh, uh, survey, surveys reported in field are not uh, corrected to grid. The two map views depicted here show a clear water development with and without grid correction applied. Hard boundaries uh, and buffers are regularly applied in well planning. Uh, many times you will see an additional 50 meter buffer added to a hard boundary placed 100 meters away from uh, property uh, boundaries to begin with. This may not be a big deal for uh, reservoirs developed with uh, large well, well separation, but uh, when looking at the uh, Clearwater, for example, where uh, well spacing is 40 to 50 meters, this becomes significant uh, as another leg can be fitted in that buffer zone, uh, potentially increasing production by 15 to 25 percent. Metal drill pipe or casing directly affect uh, survey readings. It is uh, the reason why survey tools are normally placed in uh, non-magnetic collars. But the uh, wells drilled uh, in immediate proximity of other case wells uh, have severely skewed surveys. This is the reason why uh, magnetic ranging is used instead of surveying when uh, drilling injector wells in SAGDI applications. Reverse surveys uh, calculated from referencing uh, um, reference magnetic ranging. Uh, those are calculated at the end of the lateral uh, to be used for well placement imaging uh, instead of traditional uh, surface shot while drilling. Um, 
the Stockhausen effect uh, looks at hidden dog legs resulting from survey stations relative to slide versus rotate patterns. Surveys are usually shot after drilling a full pipe or sometimes a full stand uh, with tools placed off button. button. If the survey tool uh, falls uh, at a slight spot, um, readings will be slightly different uh, compared to a few meters ahead or a few meters before in a spot where uh, the drill string was rotated. Depending on VHA distances, these errors can compound, uh, leading to apparent inclination drift and significant errors in well path DVD. Rotary steerable systems largely eliminate this type of error and continuous inclination readings can be used to correct surveys. Increased survey density, of course, diminishes uh, the effect as well. We looked at uh, some sources of uh, survey error and uncertainty. Uh, corrections and mitigations can be implemented to uh, minimize this error. But what do we do with the remaining uncertainty, some of which cannot be avoided with the current technology? Uh, the cone of uncertainty is a way of visualizing survey errors uh, from stemming from multiple sources, not just the ones uh, from uh, statistical error or uh, mathematical calculations. Having a good sense of potential uncertainty helps in understanding divergence from geomodels and plans. Rounding errors have a good statistical chance of balancing out, uh, but just for reference, uh, a uh, 0.05 degrees inclination compounded error can lead to a TVD difference of two meters over a 4,000 meter long well. We deploy software-based correlation geosteering in most development projects. The math behind the calculation uh, of geosteering is not only uh, simple, but uh, also in a way imprevious to uh, survey error. In a nutshell, uh, geosteering is the process of determining blocks of constant apparent dip, the dip value and the lateral extent of these blocks. Uh, the two values, dip and extent, are used to project structure trends ahead of the bit and generate forward-looking targets. If well inclination is lower than formation dip, the well is climbing in structure, um, and the well is uh, dropping in structure when inclination is higher than formation dip. Dip values are uh, uh, graphically matched uh, until MWD curves match the offset or reference curves. With the matching correlation, known well inclination and extent of a block, we calculate apparent dip along the well bore using this uh, relatively simple formula. But what happens when some of the known variables are erroneous, such as uh, depths and the well inclinations? It turns out not much changes. Uh, we conducted a few experiments where we introduced uh, errors in surveys and uh, ran geosteering uh, interpretation in wells uh, using uh, the altered surveys. These interpretations look almost identical, and although the well path is uh, computed a few meters TVD higher or lower, uh, it is still placed at the same stratigraphic depth. The same thing happens when uh, erroneous surveys are fed into the geosteering interpretation software. Well position uh, readings will be off, but if uh, active uh, geosteering is deployed, the well will target the desired stratigraphic interval nonetheless. There are a few additional tools in a geosteer's arsenal. One is uh, visualizing extent of the cone of uncertainty. Uh, in the displayed uh, cross sections here, uh, we see the interpreted top of Clearwater sand uh, and the well drilled in it. Uh, they are uh, displayed above the expected model stratigraphic surface. Uh, pink dotted lines show the extent of uh, expected survey uncertainty. We can see that it is, it is entirely possible the well was drilled well within the model sand uh, with the top of the sand situated inside the cone of uncertainty confines. This is just a tool to help us uh, visualize uh, what scenarios make sense and what is maybe less probable. Another handy tool is uh, compensating for a survey error of the Stockhausen effect type by uh, using continuous inclination to calculate a corrected well path. 
calculations are done at every survey station and the resulting trajectory is displayed in the cross section to visualize where the well could uh, actively be in the stratigraphic uh, sequence. Uh, differences are not large, but a plus or minus 2.5 meter difference in a 4 meter thick target can be significant, especially when uh, chasing the intervals of low MSC in a play like the Tuvane. We've seen a few uh, instances of model survey uh, surfaces displayed along well path uh, in the examples shown. It is a matter of good planning to know formation trends before starting a lateral hole. We can use uh, seismic grids, uh, surfaces uh, calculated for, from interpolating tops in offset wells, or any kind of XYZ uh, grids available. These uh, surfaces are then sliced along the well path, depicting expected for formation boundaries. As uh, geo steerers, we use these uh, markers as uh, guidelines. We don't steer to model, but always keep in the back of our mind that the uh, survey uncertainty may result in our interpretation diverging from model trends. Think of a uh, geo model as a very good starting point, but not as a hard boundary. Uh, there are exceptions uh, when, such as uh, oil water contact surfaces. Uh, that are treated with a lot more attention. As mentioned, uh, as GeoSeer, we always determine blocks of constant apparent dip. We are using uh, the calculated dips to corroborate the uh, mapped horizons. In uh, this example, we see a uh, formation top surface recalculated after drilling and geosteering each leg of a feather or fishbone well. It looks like the reservoir top came in low and then uh, top of target is dipping up steeper than the geo model. The resulting uh, uh, interpreted horizons are very precise and have a high data density, usually higher than seismic grids or geo models. Uh, now, should we integrate these uh, precise calculations back into our geo models? The answer is a resounding no we have to remember that survey errors were integrated in these uh, interpretations uh, compensated for as they may be. It is a common cause of trends diverging from uh, models. On the other hand, we are using the recalculated grids extensively when drilling multilaterals, for example. It is fair to expect that uh, errors will be similar when uh, drilling successive legs of uh, multilaterals from the same location, using the same BHA and the directional setup. With the most uh, survey uncertainty uh, premises constant or the same, we can use the trends uh, from one leg to the next. We should certainly not use these uh, local maps and surfaces for new wells drilled from a uh, different location with different tools by different companies at a different time when many uh, survey errors possibly trend in a different direction. Knowing that our geostring interpretation is different than a geo model, should we modify one or the other to have matching structures? Should we alter these numbers after the well was drilled? There are several survey correction methods that can be used post drilling, such as magnetic referencing, multi station analysis, SAC corrections, for example. If these corrections are available, they can and should be deployed, and the resulting interpretation should be recalibrated uh, to the new corrected surveys. When it comes to harmonizing geo model to uh, geo steering interpretation, calculations are very simple to shift grids, then a bit more complicated to tilt grids. Conversely, it is uh, relatively easy to progressively shift uh, well inclination so that resulting interpretation matches a geo model. It is also very easy to merge local surfaces into regional uh, grids. But should this be done? Uh, first, it uh, would be based on uh, assumptions and the results would not be very useful to boot as uh, we will most probably deal with different errors when uh, drilling uh, subsequent wells. So just because something is technically possible doesn't mean it should be done. Just how much error and uncertainty are we dealing with? Any directional company will concede there is a 2 to 3 meters DVD and maybe a 10 to 10 meters uh, azimuth uncertainty in a 2000 meter long horizontal well. We've seen additional thresholds uh, 
induced by different types of errors. Some errors compound, some are random and balance out. It is hard to put an exact number on a potential error margin, uh, but I will say that under the wrong circumstances, uh, TVD error can be in the two to uh, six meter TVD range on a 2000 meter long well, and it can be higher if the inclination error drifts uh, in one direction preferentially. With that in mind, uh, are you comfortable to drill in Prague? Even in uh, Montney or Duvernay wells, uh, where the reservoir is uh, 20 to 30 meters thick, we are generally targeting two to three meter intervals, not only looking for the best reservoir, but also for uh, drilling efficiency, like mechanic energy or ROP, or frac efficiency. Or uh, in SACD application, uh, where the reservoir left below a producer well is not produced, so uh, how much bitumen are you willing to leave behind? Some operators that uh, aggressively chase uh, reservoir bottom in the McMurray, whether it's bottom water or a Paleozoic relief, uh, have better uh, cumulative uh, production and ultimately better return on uh, investment. Heavy oil produced from uh, barefoot completion wells is a direct result of uh, reservoir exposure, so drilling precisely in zone is paramount. With uh, unconventional shale wells, money saved by drilling a faster well, maybe drilled on Prague, may be wasted with slower frac propagation. So it, I believe it makes good monetary sense to carefully target optimal zones. We mentioned the uh, bottom water and how it can be a very delicate matter with uh, when we expect reservoir boundary at a set uh, sub-sea sub level. Open hole wells drilled in bottom water are compromised, so it is well worth it in these cases to invest in solid survey correction services and procedures. Geosteering alone will not be sufficient in uh, compensating for survey error in the presence of a hard subsea boundary requirement. In conclusion, uh, um, survey error and uncertainty can significantly affect the drilling and spatial interpretation of horizontal wells. There are quite a few avenues of reducing and minimizing survey uncertainty, uh, some carrying additional cost. Bottom line is survey error can and should be reduced, not just for anti-collision, but also for better well placement. I should also mention that the uh, research is ongoing and uh, to develop a better and more uh, error-proof uh, survey system. I'm looking forward to the next uh, technical marvels uh, to come from the likes of Schlumberger and Halliburton. Software-based uh, correlation geosteering has a simple math algorithm that is by and large impervious to survey errors and compensates by placing wells in the desired target zone, even when TVDs are erroneous. With this in mind, geomodels should be used, but only as guideline guidelines. And finally, locally recalculated services are very valuable, but only for immediately adjacent well steering and should not be reintegrated in uh, regional models. I know that uh, many operators studied the uh, survey errors extensively, so if you have data set that you want uh, looked at, we are very interested in uh, to crunch those numbers and uh, give you our perspective, especially along the lines of uh, integration with correlation geosteering. I would like to acknowledge some uh, sources used in this presentation and also take the opportunity to thank the, thing, the team at uh, Chinook, Nick, John, Gabe, who left us way too soon, then Diana, uh, Adrian, and Alex, who, who provided so much support in uh, developing uh, geostring projects, workflows, and guidelines, uh, and identifying issues and finding solutions. Thank you all for your attention and uh, welcome any questions you may have. <laughs>